This is Chess Dacho. Chess has a history of nearly 1,500 years and has undergone significant changes over time. Chess engines, introduced only within the last 70 years, have had the most significant impact on the game. Chess engines have shaped and defined how top level chess is played today. The use of chess engines is now widespread among professional and amateur players alike. The earliest form of a chess engine appeared in the 18th century with the Mechanical Turk, created by Wolfgang von Kempelen. The Mechanical Turk was a life-sized human model that debuted in 1770 as the world's first autonomous chess robot. The Mechanical Turk could play chess and beat opponents, and was even able to solve the Knight's Tour chess puzzle. The Mechanical Turk remained in operation from 1770 to 1854, until it was destroyed in a fire. Years later, it was discovered that a human being was the true source of the Mechanical Turk's intelligence, and the machine was a hoax. The Turk, also known as the Mechanical Turk or Automaton Chess Player, was a fraudulent chess-playing machine constructed in the late 18th century. It was constructed and unveiled in 1770 by Wolfgang von Kempelen to impress Empress Maria Theresa of Austria, and appeared to be able to play a strong game of chess against a human opponent. The Turk was a mechanical illusion that allowed a human chess master hiding inside to operate the machine. With a skilled operator, the Turk won most of the games played during its demonstrations around Europe and the Americas for nearly 84 years. The chess masters who secretly operated it included Johann Algeier, Von Kort, Aaron Alexander, William Lewis, Jacques Moray, and William Schlumberger, but the operators within the mechanism during Kempelen's original tour remain a mystery. Kempelen was inspired to build the Turk following his attendance at the court of Maria Theresa of Austria at Schönbrunn Palace, where François Pelletier was performing an illusion act. Kempelen promised to return to the palace with an invention that would top the illusions, resulting in the creation of the automaton chess player, known as the Turk. The Turk was a life-sized model of a human head and torso dressed in Ottoman robes and a turban, with a chessboard on top of a large cabinet. The interior of the machine was designed to mislead observers, with clockwork visible on one side of the cabinet and hidden doors on the other side. The sliding seat inside the cabinet allowed the operator to evade observation, with dummy machinery sliding into place to conceal the person inside. The chessboard had a magnetic linkage, with magnets attached to each piece and a corresponding magnet on a string under each square on the board. The Turk also came with a small wooden coffin-like box for misdirection, and a pegboard chessboard connected to a pantograph-style series of levers that controlled the model's left arm. Other machinery allowed for a clockwork-type sound to be played when the Turk made a move, for the Turk to make facial expressions, and for a voice box to say ek ek during matches. An operator inside the machine had tools to communicate with the presenter outside, including two brass discs with numbers that acted as a code. The Turk made its debut in 1770 at Schönbrunn Palace, presented by Wolfgang von Kempelen to the court of Empress Maria Theresa of Austria. Kempelen would open the doors and drawers of the cabinet before announcing the machine was ready for a challenger. The Turk typically played with the white pieces and would nod twice if it threatened the opponent's queen and three times if it placed the king in check. The machine would shake its head and move the piece back if its opponent made an illegal move. Count Ludwig von Kobenzl was the first person to play against the Turk and was defeated, with the machine typically beating its opponents within 30 minutes. The machine was also able to complete the night's tour and converse with spectators using a letter board in English, French, and German. The identity of the operator during the period when Kempelen presented the machine at Schönbrunn Palace is unknown. Following its debut at Schönbrunn Palace in 1770, the interest in the Turk grew across Europe. Kempelen, however, avoided exhibiting the Turk, often lying about the machine's repair status to prospective challengers. In 1781, Kempelen was ordered by Emperor Joseph II to reconstruct the Turk and deliver it to Vienna for a state visit from Grand Duke Paul of Russia and his wife. The Turk began its European tour in 1783, beginning with an appearance in France in April and stopped at Versailles before an exhibition in Paris, where the Turk lost a match to Charles Godefroy de la Tour d'Auvergne, the Duc de Bouillon. Following his tour of Paris, Kempelen moved the Turk to London, where it was exhibited daily for five shillings. After a year in London, Kempelen and the Turk traveled to Leipzig, stopping in various European cities along the way. The machine stayed dormant at Schönbrunn Palace for over two decades, although Kempelen attempted unsuccessfully to sell it in his final years. 
Kempelen died at the age of 70 on March 26, 1804. Johann Nepomuk Mazel bought the Turk in 1805, 10 years after Kempelen's death, for half the asking price of 20,000 francs. Mazel repaired the Turk and learned its secrets, and eventually made it his goal to make explaining the machine more challenging. The Turk played Napoleon Bonaparte in 1809 at Schönbrunn Palace, with different accounts of the match, including Napoleon attempting illegal moves and the Turk knocking over the pieces before Napoleon ultimately lost. Mazel brought the Turk to Milan in 1811 for a performance with Eugène de Beauharnais, who offered to purchase the machine and eventually bought it for three times what Mazel had paid. In 1815, Mazel repurchased the Turk from Beauharnais and brought it back to Paris, where he made acquaintances of many leading chess players. Mazel took the Turk on a tour of the United Kingdom in 1819, with new developments in the act, such as allowing the opponent the first move and eliminating the king's bishop's pawn from the Turk's pieces, resulting in 45 victories, 3 losses, and 2 stalemates. In 1826, Mazel took the Turk to the United States, opening an exhibition in New York City that slowly grew in popularity, giving rise to many newspaper stories and anonymous threats of exposure of the secret. Mazel had trouble finding a proper operator for the machine and recalled a former operator, William Schlumberger, from Europe to come to America and work for him again. The Turk debuted in Boston, playing for many weeks before moving to Philadelphia for three months, and then Baltimore where it played for several months, losing a match against Charles Carroll, a signer of the Declaration of Independence. Mazel viewed the competing machine, the Walker chess player, and attempted to buy it, but the offer was declined, and the duplicate machine toured for a number of years, never receiving the fame that Mazel's machine did and eventually falling into obscurity. Mazel continued with exhibitions around the United States until 1828 when he visited Europe, returning in 1829, and throughout the 1830s, he continued to tour the United States, exhibiting the machine as far west as the Mississippi River and visiting Canada. In Richmond, Virginia, the Turk was observed by Edgar Allan Poe, who wrote an essay on the Turk. Mazel eventually took the Turk on his second tour to Havana, Cuba, where Schlumberger died of yellow fever, leaving Mazel without an operator for his machine. Mazel died at sea in 1838, leaving his machinery with the ship captain. After Mazel's death, the Turk fell into the hands of John Ull, who tried to auction it off but ultimately bought it himself for $400. Edgar Allan Poe's personal physician, John Kearsley Mitchell, approached Ohl and restored the Turk for public appearances. The Turk was eventually donated to the Chinese Museum of Charles Wilson Peel, but was later forgotten and destroyed in a fire on July 5, 1854. John Gon built his own version of the machine in the 1980s using the original chessboard and a computer program as the opponent. The first public display of Gon's Turk was in November 1989 at a History of Magic conference. This is Chestacho.